Hello and welcome once again to the Foxfire Farmhouse. We're glad that you've joined us. Our little, our little den <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> Wait, it's almost like you know what we're about to talk about. I don't know. So this is a... Freedom! <laughs> if you haven't guessed already, this is a movie talk about the movie Braveheart. Do you know what the problem is with Scotland? What is the problem with Scotland? It's full of Scots. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> that, I knew something was wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, so I have not, obviously, as we've talked about many times before, times. I have not watched the movie Braveheart ever in my life until last sad, night. Sad, sad, sad. So I finally remedied that mm-hmm. terrible tragedy mm-hmm. and watched the movie. Yes. And I have to say it was quite great. Like, it, it was really good. I liked Do you it think it was worthy of an Oscar? Best picture? I would have to know what else was up against it, I think. Uh, but Sense and Sensibility. And, okay. uh, oh man, there's another one that was that was really close to it. But I didn't I would I definitely didn't. say, though, it's like an Oscar category. Like, yeah. It's Oscar worthy. Yeah, that was something that also on the article that we talked about last week, uh, that he talked about what makes a good Oscar movie and how the standard has changed. And he thought that these are the best years of the Oscars because it was a movie that was high enough for lowbrow people to go look up at mm-hmm. and yet low enough for or at the level that a high yeah. person could appreciate. I mean, he had it, which, which that's actually really fascinating yeah. because I, so I've never watched Braveheart, yeah, but I've certainly heard about it. And it was 95, right? I think was so. Was it 95 yeah. when it came it was out? Late, late 90s. So, yeah, so it's like uh, it's within my lifetime yeah. that this movie came out, but Not it's mine. a movie that everyone knew about or that like his his referenced, right? Like oh, yeah. if anyone says Braveheart, almost everyone knows yeah. what we're talking about. It goes freedom. back into that. Yeah, yeah, the painted face. It goes everything. back into that cultural, like... They may take our lives. Yeah, <laughs> and then you've got movie references showing up again and again to that movie. Mm-hmm. You know, so so it, it's like seeped into the cultural yeah. uh, kind of like consciousness of everybody. At least it seems that way in the circles I run in. 100%. But, the, uh, but, but what's interesting, though, is that that then still hits the Oscars, mm-hmm. yet... What he had in that article was a really fascinating uh, statistic that, like, what was it, 4% mm-hmm. of 4,500 people who were randomly chosen for a, uh, a survey yeah. said that they had seen any one of the movies that were nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. And then 6% yeah. of those said they had watched another one. Like, so. Oh, wow. 4% of everybody has watched. Two or one. Bring Billy and Crystal like, back is all I can say. <laughs> and then like point zero zero something percent of everybody have watched two of them. Yeah. So that's really that's really interesting. Yeah, and another thing too that he brought up was the fact that uh if you combined all of the, the best pictures uh in the Oscars, collectively the money that they made is only a quarter of Spider Man No Way Home. <laughs> oh, wow. Seriously, but that's not the case with Braveheart. Braveheart was one of the highest grossing movies, I think, of all time. Like it's up there, it's up there on the scale, up there with Titanic. And I don't know now because there's been so many movies that have jumped Titanic, which held it for the longest time. A lot of that, and this could just—I don't know how true this is, but it would seem like it makes sense of the data to say that a lot of the movies that are being chosen now are chosen for ideological reasons as opposed to, like practical <coughs> movie movie Wrong quality button. movie quality mo- uh reasons yeah instead so so that then you end up with what is it that the people in hollywood value mm-hmm. not so much what is it that the people who are watching the movies that come out of hollywood value yes and that's a huge disconnect yeah so and then Bra- braveheart though is the kind of movie that uh you know a huge population everyone get around it. yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- right. i don't know because it's a classic unless you're like a weird story not weird but if you're like a crazy history nut that just cannot stand somebody doing something different than how it actually happened yeah so that so that would be very interesting to hear from you so yeah. i'm not a historian obviously yeah. i am not even familiar with scottish history and kind of this whole era of time yeah uh my Understanding comes from I think the Outlaw King, which is about yeah. Bruce. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. And it so was after. now. So something I was curious about and not curious enough to look up because I got done watching the movie late at night mm-hmm. was, is the Bruce that's shown the younger Bruce in Braveheart, the same character that is portrayed in the Outlaw King 
by Chris Pine. As in, like, are they... The same historical character. Yes, they're the same historical character. Okay. So I forgot what the Scottish actor's name is, but they're supposed to be playing the same character. Okay. Um, so they're, so so then if... Because I've heard people say the Outlaw King is more historically accurate. Yes. So then it's, a, it's quite a departure yeah. from the historical portrayal of the Bruce. Yeah, it is, but it isn't. Like, I, I hate when people... Like, I think I've even said that, but I think after watching Braveheart again and re- listening to interviews, I think that... Uh, they both do a good job. I think ultimately I really prefer Braveheart and I think it stands the test of time because it gets at something more than just accuracy. Mm-hmm. It gets at the heart. Yeah. So then uh, what? what is it? How do they handle William Wallace? Is So William Wallace is largely a... Um, like a legendary figure. Like okay. it, like Robert the Bruce is the one who actually won the freedom of, of the Scots. He, he was the one who was the king who, who then... Uh, went forward, um, and William Wallace was just a very devout, um, a devout revolutionary figure in Scotland, uh, who held to what he believed in and led many many people and really kickstarted again one of the many tries of the Scottish people to win their freedom, and then they would continue on after Robert the Bruce because England once again got their hands in there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So this this one uh, largely uh, is based off of the legendary stories surrounding him. So there's some okay. legendary history yeah. written about uh, William Wallace. And so that's what they chose to, to look at, not necessarily all of the historical accounts, but the, a lot of, there's a lot of historians that love this movie and there's a lot of historians that hate this movie. Okay, that's but interesting. They're they're few. Yeah. And, and that goes back to, I think this probably goes back a little bit to our talk about the portrayal of Jesus in films. Yeah. That the question becomes, okay, did it capture the heart of the story that was being told mm-hmm. or did it capture the historical accuracy? Yeah. Because there is a, like, so I find when we're talking about movies per movie merit, I didn't particularly love the outlaw King, yeah. but I did really, I, I would totally, I'd probably never watch the outlaw King again. Totally would watch Braveheart again. Oh yeah. And so, you know, not, not that that, I'm not the historian, so I'm not the one to be saying that that means anything. But just that, like in terms of a movie, when you try to do things perfectly historically accurate, mm-hmm. then a lot of the drama or some of the... It has to be done really well yeah. to make both things happen simultaneously. Because yeah, you kind of put, like, you put uh, handcuffs on when you're like, I will only do the facts. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of room between those facts. There's oh, a, yeah. lot of, right. a lot of threads that you can pull on. There's a lot of... Um, intangible storylines and the greater piece of history. Um, and I think that's what they got at here is that like William Wallace isn't just the historical William Wallace. He's a representation of freedom, a representation yep. of the people of Scotland. Right. Like that's who he really, he represented Scotland is really what he was supposed to represent. Yeah. And that's what he was supposed to represent to Robert the Bruce was I am Scotland. I am the people that, yeah. that you're to lead and I would follow you. Like that's, that's, that's yeah. who he is in the movie. Yeah. But yeah, what did you think of like his characterization? I know we talked about it previously about like uh, I had an experience with a pastor telling me that like, he's very similar to what a leader and especially like a pastor should be in terms yeah. of the qualities that you want in him. Not necessarily you want a pastor running around swinging the sword, but you want a pastor yeah. who has that boldness. What do you What do you think about that? Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I so I I think one of the things that I walked away from was seeing how powerful this movie <laughs> can be for people. So. I w- I'm watching it, you know, in my 30s. Uh, yeah. But, like, it would have hit me way differently had I had it hit me at, like, 19 or 20. You, you yeah. know, like, just because it is that kind of coming-of-age example of what a man should be. So it's inspiring to me now. But I think mm-hmm. I can see why it's so impactful for so many of, like, my friends who yeah. saw it when they were younger. Growing that up it was, like, it, the yeah. call to be a man, mm-hmm. where I where that call has come to me in different ways and through different means mm-hmm. than Braveheart. Mm-hmm. That, uh, so I can, I can see how it would have real power because he has such a... He, he is such an example mm-hmm. of the kind of man I want to be, mm-hmm. right? Like, the kind of man who isn't afraid, mm-hmm. who is willing to act... Who's not who's not a thinker and a talker, yeah. and that's all. Yeah. But someone who's a man of action. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's unabashedly violent, mm-hmm. and yet unabat 
it, it's because of his loves, yeah. right? Like it's his love for his wife. It's his love for his country mm-hmm. that drives his violence. Yeah. It's not. And then even when, you know, he's talking to, and ultimately his love of freedom, mm-hmm. right? The freedom to love a wife, the freedom to love a country yeah. that is animating his action. And so when even he stands up against the Lord's, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I, like that looks really familiar to me yeah. in this in the situations we've been a part of yeah. over the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and then uh, just situations I've been a part of in my life where you have the opportunity to act and to stand up against the way things have always been mm-hmm. for a principle. Yeah. And like, just call it for what it is. What are we doing? What are yeah, you guys yeah. doing right now? I'm yeah. going to go do something that means something, right? Yep. Like battling bureaucracy and idleness and it's just kind of resting. And having the boldness to to do something, yep, and to do something with wisdom, not just to to go out there and wield a sword like he like constantly. The measure of a man is is right is like right here, mm-hmm. like like this is this is what you learn to like to to use before you use a sword, right? And that and that was a big point is just that William Wallace was very smart, like he's he was wise, and and emotionally like sound, and that's why he was so impactful with his violence. And that's where you have like Outlaw King and you have that crazy character who looks a lot like uh, William Wallace and he's just going out and killing people with blind rage and he doesn't strike the same chord that Wallace does. Yeah. Because Wallace is actually tempered with wisdom and right. tempered with uh, uh, a moral compass and uh, what's that word? A conscience. Yeah. So. And, he, and he's so... Like he's a man of action in everything that he does. The way mm-hmm. he pursues his wife in the beginning, the yeah. way he uh, leads his men, the mm-hmm. way he selects men, like all of it is just let's act, let's be wise. But but not it's it's not the wisdom of speculative mm. philosophers who have no contact with the reality that they're dealing with. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's just the kind of man that I would follow into battle. Y- mm-hmm. You know, and the kind yeah. of man that I would aspire to then be. Yeah, and that's that's what I love about the Robert the Bruce with him and Robert the Bruce because I find that's that's us, that's the audience, and that's who you identify yes, with exactly. I'm, like you want to identify with with William Wallace, but no, like that's 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 like an icon. Everybody's the Robert the Bruce of like I want to like I want to believe in something just like mm-hmm. he does. I want to fight for something. I want to have that passion and that what he ha- I want what he has. I don't right. want to be here and being a king. I have nothing. Yep. I have nothing if I don't have like something that I'm pursuing. And it shows the truth of the situation though too, because the moment that you go in life and, and this is so this principle is seen mm-hmm. no matter if you are just trying to take action in your home or in your community, mm-hmm. uh or if you're trying to lead a country in, in a revolt, yeah. right? Like, so, so you don't have to be William Wallace leading the Scots to learn this principle. Mm-hmm. But the principle is, is that when you're a man of action, when you act, when you act on your principles, you are going to suffer. Like yeah. suffering is a part of that mm-hmm. because you live in a world that opposes your action, mm-hmm. the, especially wise action, mm-hmm. because we're sinful people. Yeah, and so we naturally want to. Uh, buck the system. Well, the truth is we want to be subjugated by the system. Mm-hmm. That's that's yeah. probably the, the better truth. Yeah. And that we don't want to be held responsible for our actions. We mm-hmm. want to be able to blame somebody. We want a scapegoat. We want someone to say, I'm in this situation because of you or you or this system mm-hmm. or that system yeah. or just this is how we love our families mm-hmm. is by not acting mm-hmm. so that they can still have a miserable existence, you yeah. know? So yeah. that's kind of how, what, what we're being pushed into. Mm-hmm. But the moment you start taking action and fighting against that, you're going to see, like in the movie, mm-hmm. that people begin to oppose you, yeah. that you will have people betray you, that you will have losses in mm-hmm. that action. You are going to personally suffer pain and, and torture. It's not like William Wallace is mm-hmm. a guy who everyone wants to be because he's got... Yeah, a nice home and mm-hmm. you know the best of everything. He's actually lives a pretty crummy life yeah. in lives terms of the woods. Yeah, yeah, running constantly, yeah. being yeah. chased by everybody. He's not exactly living living it up, you know. No, no. <laughs> but he lives a good life, mm-hmm. and I think that 
we all want to like Robert the Bruce, we all want to live that life. Yeah. But we're just not ready to suffer like yeah. you need to suffer. It's like uh life. yeah. And they hit that quote in the movie when he uh he talks about his dad is talking to him, Robert the Bruce, and he says, uh he's like, uh a no like compromise is what makes a nobleman. And like that's that's what everything's built on, compromise. Yeah, right. And that we have to be willing to make compromise in ways that are shameful for the better, for the sake of our our nobil- nobility of staying where we're at staying on this level staying on this comfortable level where even our enemies give us stuff and even the people underneath us give us stuff it's that it's that selfish kind of yeah. motive of like oh no well I'm just doing this to stay comfortable like, right and if you live for comfort yeah that's that you are going to have to make compromises <clears throat> mm-hmm. to make that comfortable it's life. a downward slope like it requires more and more of you just like long shakes and it requires you to sell out. Like this is, this is why it, it, it trickles into the Christian brotherhood, especially when you're in a workforce or where, wherever you're at, there's always the, like there's always a spectrum of brothers within the workforce. And if you find yourself sitting in the seat of scoffers soon enough, you're going to be scoffing at your brother. Like yep. that's right. That's where you end up. It's a slip. It requires yeah. more and more of you just like it requires more and more suffering the other way. And so don't be, don't be Robert the Bruce. Don't be able to have had your wits taken from you and to have been betrayed by your own people. Mm-hmm. And like he put himself in a position to be there because of yeah. all of the, all the work that he did and the work that his father did. That's why William Wallace was captured because of him. Yep. And so, yeah. And I think though, what the movie does get right, and I like, and, and that I that I wish more movies like uh, I I thought of Gladiator at the end of this one. Mm-hmm. because at the end you've got his wife coming back to him yeah. as he's dying mm-hmm. and which is similar to gladiator again you've got there at the end where he's dying after he's uh, been he's killed the emperor and you know he's kind of giving his final orders now to his mm-hmm. command to his captains before he dies yeah and his wife and son are waiting for him mm-hmm. in the you know in the next life mm-hmm. and so what the movie doesn't yeah yeah exactly but the movie so many manly tears were shed in this movie <laughs> <laughs> what the movie doesn't get to or doesn't like yeah expound on mostly because we all are rather fuzzy on what exactly it's going to look like in the mm-hmm. resurrection yeah but wallace lives mm-hmm. and the and the, so his story doesn't end when he dies no right like that's not the end of the story. Mm-hmm. And if you see that is the end of the story, mm-hmm. then you're going to be, you're not going to choose to, why not be the yeah. nobleman? Right? Like there's more, but there is more. Yeah. And so, yes, on one hand, the, the life of action, the life of fighting for what you believe in and following principle is going to be a life of continually more and more suffering, mm-hmm. more and more pain and yeah. more and more burden. But, but I would say, Number one, it comes with a joy. Mm-hmm. There is a type of joy yeah. in brotherhood that is shared by the pe- by the Scots yeah. who are fighting for their freedom. Mm-hmm. It's like Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah, that there's no way that, that you there's can There's a sense say, of merriment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't... W- would you rather sit in that nobleman's room or would you rather be around a campfire with those guys, right? Like, yeah. definitely around the campfire. Yeah, just like, I mean, I would have rather have walked with, with Christ and received the derision of everybody and had, had that company than to have sat in the seats of the Pharisees pulling my hair out. Yeah. Like, and, and the thing is, is that everyone, at least every level-headed person mm-hmm. who looks at these situations and mm-hmm. looks at these stories, it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I'd rather be at the campfire. I'd rather be with Jesus in mm-hmm. the boat. I would rather be, you know, mm-hmm. it's easy for us to say that. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that when we run into a real situation in real life mm-hmm. where the question is suffering or comfort, yeah, it's really... Yeah. Really, hard really hard to pull that. And, and the thing is, is that I, I know it's really hard because uh, what did you do when you woke up this morning mm-hmm. and you had to, you know, get stuff done? Like, mm-hmm. how did you handle that? Did you complain about the responsibilities that were on your plate for the day? Yeah. Did you complain when someone didn't pull their weight? Did you uh, gripe at your kids when they... <laughs> did, you, did you gripe at your kids when they, I feel a, I feel a story coming on or something? Did you gripe at your kids when, uh, you know, they did something that caused you more work? In yeah. The day? Like, right. Like the moment that we face with that. And when I, yeah, when I look at my own life like that, I'm like, okay, 
I'm way more like Robert the Bruce yeah. than I want to be. Yeah, and, the, and that's, that's a good place to start. It's just the reality of that. That's where you're at, but you have to make the work. And that's what I love about the movie is because it shows you Robert the Bruce redeemed. Yeah. And it shows you yeah. him going, you bled with Wallace, now bleed with me. And mm-hmm. he goes forward and he leads these people. And, and again, it's just another reason why community is so important. Yeah. Is that we're still called, even if we're alone, to make those choices and to follow after the Lord because we're not alone. But it sure as heck is a lot more, it's a lot more, it's easier to endure with a brother next to you who's going yeah. through the same thing. Absolutely. That's, that's why when you're doing it, you're also encouraging your brothers. When you bring back the report, right. I'm suffering. Yeah. It allows your brother to go, I'm going to suffer like him. Just like Robert the Bruce saw William Wallace suffer. He goes, I can do that too. Yeah. Because he did it. And that's I mean, what we're at the very beginning to... of the movie, this is what happens with Wallace, right? Yeah. He comes in to take revenge. Yeah. And he comes in the moment he starts attacking mm-hmm. the rest of the people who are already all angst ridden and kind of like trying to figure out what they're going to do. Boom. They they're him. there and they come around and they fight. And yeah. it, courage begets courage. I, I heard a story on a podcast recently. They were interviewing mm-hmm. a guy who. Anyway, long story about what was going on. Mm-hmm. But this woman had was at a job mm-hmm. that she was stuck in, and they were teaching. They were doing some, like, uh, sensitivity training stuff. Yeah. And part of what ended up happening is one of the guys, they got talking about the vaccines, and one person said, man, I wish all these people who were unvaccinated would just find an, go live on an island together and die. And the, everyone in the room or at least on the Zoom call, I guess it wasn't really in the room, started, you know, kind of like, yeah, 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 yep, yeah, definitely, you know, kind of like chiming in. They didn't want to say anything against it, but this woman was fed up with things, and she had finally had an opportunity for a new job, and she's like, actually, I'm not going to get the vaccine. I have too many questions about it. And she said that, and then a couple more people spoke up after a minute later, yeah, we don't have, we haven't got it either. And the the courage just to say the truth, and this isn't even, this isn't like a charge in the battle moment, but it can feel like that. Mm-hmm. And the question is, are you going to tell the truth in that kind of scenario? Are you going to be honest? Are you going to you know, stand up for what you think is right? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be willing to go against the tide? Those kinds of things. Uh, w- the moment that you do that, you actually often find that you have brothers or sisters who come around you mm-hmm. who are just waiting to know that they're not alone. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So just, yeah, being willing to share that burden and to yeah. be, the, be the William Wallace in that situation. Be, be Christ ultimately is the, the bigger example yeah, of, right. of, of, of be like him. Yeah, this is one of those movies that I think I'll uh, definitely be coming back to with my boy as he grows up. Yeah, you know? I was going to ask, when, when would you want to introduce it to your boy? When oh, would man. You introduce it? Oh, that was a question I got. Younger than other people will, probably. <laughs> like, Me too. I, I, like, he, I'm my boy's eight right now. Like, I could see myself bringing it to him pretty young. Because we've got yeah. VidAngel, so I can filter yeah. The His sexual stuff, so that then I don't have to worry about the sexuality. But then we can just go, like, just here you're going to mm-hmm. get the violence. But look at this guy. He's yeah. cool, but why is he cool? Is, do you think his life, like, just yeah. the kind of talk we're having right now, yeah. to have that kind of talk after a movie. Exactly. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it's just, a, it's like like he talked about, it's one of those first rated R movies. Like, this would be the first rated R movie I showed my son. That'd be awesome. My son especially. This would be a great, this would be a great one. Anyway. Yeah, great so movie. It, it was a great movie. Go watch it if you haven't. If you have, we'd love to hear what you think about it. Check it out. Give us your thoughts at podcast at foxfartfarmhouse.com. Send that email to us, and we'd love to hear from you. Or you could comment on any of the social media or YouTube. (laughs) Yeah. But until next time, this has been Foxfire Farmhouse. Bye. Bye.